so this video will be about signal modulation uh, more specifically amplitude modulation so the question is the, the whole problem is basically running around this thing that you have this blue wave which we will call the message wave that is the actual signal that you want to send to uh, to the receiver cool uh, but you can't actually send the signal because it has a very big wavelength and and to create uh, EM waves of that big wavelength you need bigger antenna of course and having that bigger antenna is uh, kind of impractical so you instead try to send the signal in some other way so what could you do to send the signal you could maybe try to come up with another signal that represents the parts of the actual signal so you are encoding the signals it's the signal was already encoding but you are now encoding that encoding into another signal and then sending it so this is what i'm talking about if you uh, have another curve say another sine wave okay so you have this signal like this right this blue curve and if you have another uh, red curve which we will use to uh, send information about this blue curve you could basically make this okay so basically over here instead of having one plus i will say hand right and so you could do this thing and and we should have m equal to one that will make it more clear anyway this is good enough so what did I do? Uh, this red curve, it's still a sinusoidal curve except that its amplitude is con continuously changing. So the equation for this red curve is m sine of omega sub m x times a sine of omega sub c x plus p. So this a sine of omega c x plus p, that's our uh, blue curve, right? Okay, actually it should have p over there, but then fine if you uh, ignore this, it's still the same thing. So let's just show what i mean so even if you change your p the behavior doesn't actually change so the p is actually irrelevant right now anyway the red curve it has this equation uh this function is m sine of omega sub mx times a sine of omega sub cx plus p you can ignore the plus p for now so it's basically this blue curve times some factor and that factor basically scales up the local amplitude uh, yeah and this blue curve this blue curve tells how much you want to scale up the amplitude so a sine omega c x plus p that is our carrier wave a sine of omega sub m x so uh, let's just show what the carrier wave actually is so when the modulation is zero okay no let's put one over here so one plus and now make it zero or you could just put m equal to one maybe that would have no that wouldn't have worked anyway so when you have m equal to zero you just have uh the original carrier wave which is just normal sinusoidal but then when you start to increase your m this wave starts to deform and it it tries to take the shape of uh this blue curve i mean it's its boundary starts to take that uh, shape right so now just remove this amplitude uh, the one in that amplitude because I want to show that it does take that shape so first of all increase TC so that, it, so that it becomes more clear and now so TC uh, why, what is TC over here it's not that important it's just uh, it's just kind of a parameterization for your frequency of the of the carrier wave so i did that it's not actually a formal thing i just did it to uh, make my slider go from linear to suddenly exponential so if i increase this even a bit it just goes to very very large values so for some tc you have some omega c which is a which is a very good frequency very high frequency you can clearly see that uh, this red curve it lines up with the blue curve 
even though technically it's not lining up it's just that it's touching the curve at a lot of points right so because it touches it at so many points its outline just becomes the view curve right so now you must be thinking why did i remove that one plus over here uh, and what was that one plus why do we put that over here so think about it how would this thing how would this red curve be interpreted in the receiver you have these you have these parts where the uh, magnitude of the amplitude is very large and yes these two these do correspond with extreme values so this corresponds with the maxima but then this curve like this part it corresponds with the minima right that that's not actually going to happen the receiver will think that it's corresponding to the maxima because it looks like that right so the receiver it's kind of an idiot so it, it cannot understand what is uh, the maxima and what's the minima it just thinks oh yeah like it's just heating up there's more energy coming in then it must be that it's a maxima no you don't want that to happen so that's why you put one plus over here and keep m less than one so when these two conditions are met you will see that uh, for for a minima you do get a minima in amplitude as well and for a maxima you get an amplitude maximum and when m be becomes bigger than one the problem is basically that over here the amplitude shifts to negative so its magnitude becomes uh, larger once again and that's not something good because once again the receiver is an idiot it will think that uh, these points these points where the magnitude of the amplitude is small maybe those are the minima of our blue curve but that's not the case clearly so you should keep m less than one and you have to have this one plus over there so that you can clearly convey what you want to convey cool right so yeah i'll see you guys in the next video